Hey everyone, Trev here at The Dark Room, and in this video, I'm gonna be talking about the Contax T2. Don't worry, it's not the normal Contax T2 video um, talking about how amazing it, this camera is and how it's the best point and shoot and comparing it to some other high-end point and shoot. Um, I will talk about how it is a good, great camera that I've taken some great photos with, but with that being said, um, I don't actually think it's worth the hype. And my um, goal is to, for those of you who feel like you need to get the hyped cameras like this camera, and there are many other ones that you feel like you might need to get this camera to get the best results, um, I want to show you that that's not necessarily the case. And then for those of you who still really want this camera, because it is a great camera, hopefully um, this video will help bring down the prices maybe because people will realize that maybe they're not worth upwards of a thousand or more dollars yes this point and shoot camera can sell for around a thousand or more dollars which is pretty crazy that's partially uh, it's for multiple reasons one it is a good camera it's a great point and shoot camera there are many great uh, photographers out there doing amazing work and then on top of that celebrities like uh kendall jenner and uh, NBA player Devin Booker have been seen with these cameras, which will bring up the price. Uh, for the most part, I've shot with most of the high-end point shoots, and they're all going to produce very similar results to this camera. Nothing that you're going to tell a big difference between um, in a video like this. Um, the only differences are uh, usability, size, and the lens, um, like focal length of the lens and how fast they are. But when it comes to image quality, they're all going to be very similar. Instead, I wanted to compare it to another camera that is not a point and shoot, but I use it as a point and shoot. It is a Canon Rebel. This is the Canon Rebel T2, and this is actually my wife's camera. Um, I have the same one with the black pancake 40 millimeter lens. Hers has the white one and uh, helps us tell the difference between the two. And it also has uh, Luke Skywalker on there for those of you who are Star Wars fans. This is a Rebel Skywalker. Makes sense. And yes, this is not a point and shoot camera. But as you can see for an SLR, I don't have big hands and this is a very small camera. It's obviously a lot bigger than the Contax T2. Um... But for a for being a uh, SLR and everything that it has packed into it, it's very small. So first of all, let's go over price. This camera, like I said, can sell around a thousand dollars. Sometimes you can find them for cheaper, but oftentimes you can find them for more, and the prices are only going up. And this is just a point and shoot. The camera itself was bought for around 25 bucks and the lens itself was bought used for a hundred. Um, at that most expensive, this lens brand new is 150 and um, this camera you're not gonna pay over a hundred dollars for. You can find them dirt cheap. There are other versions. I'm just doing the T2 because that's what I have and this is a T2 which is why it's T2 versus T2. So this has a Zeiss Sonar 38mm 2.8 lens that shoots from 2.8 at the fastest and stopped all the way down to f16, which is controllable on this lens. You can control it to shoot from f4 to f16, or you can put it on the auto setting, which is 2.8. If you're shooting in 2.8, it just picks whatever best aperture it needs. So it doesn't mean it's going to be shooting at 2.8 unless it can in low light. Um, and then shutter speed wise, it can shoot eight second long exposure. And then it's fastest is a 500th of a second, which is not fast at all. Um, so that's why if you're shooting in daylight more, you might, I, we might recommend shooting with a hundred ISO film and this camera, what makes this camera unique, um, compared to a lot of other point shoots is that it has exposure compensation right there that you can change, which is pretty nice, plus or minus two stops, um, which is pretty good for a camera like this and gives you a little more um, control over the exposure, but it's still completely auto 
The autofocus is auto and it's a single autofocus point in the middle. You can focus, lock focus, and when it turns green in the viewfinder, then you can frame and half hold and then take your photo, which is really nice. But that doesn't always work for me and I had some problems with that, which you might see later on in this video. And then uh, last but not least, this was made, released in 1990. It also has a flash. Um, the single flash just is a single flash. And then there's a dub double flash, which I believe is for lower light. It pops one first so it can find focus, I believe. Um, or it's just for low light and then it pops a second one. Um, I mainly shot in auto mode or with a single flash auto mode. This was made in 2004, so 14 years newer. And this is the last um, Canon Rebel film camera ever made until they went to digital. As it can shoot from a 30 second long exposure to a 4,000th of a second max shutter speed, which is crazy fast. That gives you a lot of control. That would allow you to shoot wide open in daylight, um, shoot higher ISOs in daylight with a lot of light. Uh, control your depth of field more. This has exposure compensation of three stops, plus or minus. Uh, this has seven autofocus points that are controllable, completely controllable. Um, you can select them. It also has continuous focus, which is called servo. Um, it also has um, one shot, which I use more often. And then you can lock focus, half hold, and frame. And then obviously, if you want... You can shoot manual um, by switching to manual. And the cool thing is if you're shooting manual focus, you can actually see that happen in your viewfinder and your autofocus points will light up as you go in and out of focus. This can shoot multiple exposures, which I love doing with this camera. And it has three metering modes. The metering modes on this camera are very, very good. It has a, off the top of my head, it has a center weighted, a center equivalent, and then like basically a matrix meter of everything on the whole thing. And then for exposure, you have manual and you have aperture priority, shutter priority program, and then you're just standard green box auto, which some people will scoff at for using that on a camera like this. But that's no different than this. This is just auto. Like that's all this is, is auto exposure. Mm -hmm. So this thing not only has auto exposure, but it has manual aperture priority, shutter priority program, which is basically auto as well. Um, it has TTL metering, which means it's through the lens for the exposure and through the lens for the flash. And yes, it does have a flash. The flash on this is very good. What's really nice about this camera is that if I really want to capture a moment, I can just hold it down and shoot, and this flash recharges very fast. So that's really nice, it's really fast compared to this camera. Um, when I'm on flash mode, and then I keep hitting it. So there's a lot of time in between that. So if there's a moment that you want to capture, um, that's a disadvantage with this one. And then you can shoot a little bit faster without the flash. But with this one, it's still faster. And that's, I think, two and a half uh, frames per second. And the biggest advantage of this camera is the fact that it can mount any EF modern day lens to it. This is the second cheapest lens that Canon makes, and it's just as sharp, if not, well, it is sharper than the Contax T2. This lens is just sharper. As you'll see, um, there's not been one photo that I've taken with the Contax T2 that has been sharper than this 40 millimeter pancake. And that's also why I chose this lens. I love 40 millimeter pancake, uh, 40 millimeter focal length, and the Contax T2 is a 38. So they're very close in focal length. And um, you can put any lens on here. You could put pro uh, grade L lenses, uh, 85-1-2, which I've done. And this camera will do just fine. It looks kind of silly because um, it's a small SLR. 
It's very light. It's actually about, with this lens, about the same weight as a Contax T2. There's two things that um, this camera doesn't have over the Contax T2, and that is um, size. This is obviously more pocketable. Um, this can fit in a front pocket, a back pocket, no problem. While the only pocket this is gonna fit in is basically a hoodie pocket, like a front hoodie pocket might fit, but you're just gonna put a camera strap on this. It's really light. You can fling it around the back, no, no problem. Um, and then also style. If you're into how a camera looks, obviously if you're gonna be taking some selfies or if you want cool cameras or to look cool taking photos, this one is gonna look a lot cooler than this one for most people, especially the one, this one with the white lens, a lot of people don't like it, but I actually don't mind this. I like that this camera's kind of incognito and it's not flashy. Um, it's all about the end results, which I'm gonna get to very, very soon. Also, one last thing a lot of people will point out is that this camera is plastic and that this is titanium. Just because this is titanium doesn't mean that it's any more durable. Um, I've actually dropped my version of this camera, accidentally dropped it uh, around three feet. It hit, bounced, and rattled around. And the only thing that it did was it automatically re-wound -round, the film into the cartridge, which is, I think, a safety mechanism on this camera. But I still shoot with that camera till this day, no problem. And here's the thing, if I did break it, it's only like 25 bucks that I'm out or 50 bucks max to get another one. So it's not that big of a deal. I would not want to drop this camera. Um, one, because it's not mine, I'm borrowing. And two, because it'd be really expensive to fix. And I don't think it would be working anymore if I dropped it three feet. Just, I don't think it would. Maybe on carpet, but if I were to drop it on like a wood floor or like the sidewalk, this thing would have a big dent and I don't think it would work anymore. While this one just kind of bounces and might crack a little bit, I don't know. But this just feels more usable. Like I'm not worried about it like rubbing and hitting things and moving around. Like it's a durable camera. I haven't had any issues. I've taken it on hikes. Um, where this one, I want a baby a lot more. Even if it was my own camera, I would definitely baby it. I would keep it, I would like, think a lot more about this camera, despite it being made out of titanium. But now on to the results. And the first roll that I shot was Fuji, uh, Fuji Color C200. And I shot them at a sunrise um, on San Clemente Pier, right down the road from our lab. As you can see, it, it was a beautiful morning. And the photos, when I first started looking through the roll, the scans, they looked good they both look really really good and as you see this photo of a wave coming in two separate waves coming in you can start to see a little bit of a difference between the two and this is not me comparing um, necessarily the camera it's more so comparing the lens itself uh, to the Contax T2 so I shot this lens wide open at 2.8 for every single one of these photos. And this one was on auto mode on a 2.8 mode. So some of them might have been 2.8, some might have been f4, somewhere around there. But I don't know because it's on auto. And as you can see, the Contax T2 vignettes. It goes dark in the bottom half. You lose some color in there while you see that 40 millimeter pancake on the Rebel doesn't vignette nearly as much and you get a lot better color because of that. Moving over uh, to the next one of these surfers, you see again that there's a, both are great images, both look good, but again the Contax T2 vignettes a lot. It's really dark at the bottom, you lose a lot of color. That uh, guy sitting on the surfboard, you lose, he's just kind of fading into dark. The 40 millimeter pancake on the Rebel, there's a lot more detail down there. So moving on to the photos of the Bear Coast coffee cup, this is to show you what the macro ability looks like. Now, most rangefinders and point and shoots typically don't have great macro. Um, that's pretty normal uh, for point and shoot cameras. And as you can see, that's as close as I could get with the Bear Coast 
um, cup, so the coffee cup. So if you want to get really close to your subject, a point and shoot's not necessarily going to be the thing for you. Um, SLRs, though, regardless of the lens, allow you to get pretty close. Um, this 40 millimeter pancake is not a macro lens by any means, and I could get very, very close um, to to that cup. As you can see, it almost filled the whole frame, which is definitely an advantage. There are cam there are lenses you can mount on here that could go one to one, really close uh, macro if you wanted, if that's your thing. So this might be my favorite photo um, from the morning, and. Uh, it's an easy photo to take. It's just, you know, that light post. I focused on the light post with a Contax or with a Rebel T2. I put the focus point straight on that, got confirmation that it was focused, saw that it was focused in the viewfinder, took the photo at 2.8. This one focused as good as I could in the middle, uh, framed, and the green light was on saying it was in focus, and then I framed, and then I took that photo, and looking at them wide, like from not zoomed in, they look both really good. But then when you get in closer, you can start to see the advantage of shooting with an SLR that gives you um, way more control over the focus. So as you can see, the Contax T2 is soft um, and I didn't nail focus. I didn't really completely nail focus anywhere. It's kind of focused, I think back focused on infinity for the railing, while the Canon Rebel T2 with the 40 millimeter pancake nailed it. It's very, very sharp. And then, so then I photographed this scene, which has a person fishing with along the little railing, and that's a larger subject to hit focus, to focus on, because the hat, the person itself, and the railing are all on the same focus plane, so I focused basically on their back. And both photos look good. I actually like the T2, uh, the Contax T2 photo better, the moments better with the person's head up. But when you zoom or when you zoom in, you see that I missed focus, that the camera missed focus on the Contax T2, while the Rebel nailed focus. No problem. It is tack sharp. And here's the thing with this camera, I was really thinking, like, I'm like focusing, trying to get it perfect really thinking about it because I'm new to that camera with this one zero thought went into the focus you know I just focused framed took the shot um and nailed it where this one I had to think a lot about it and I still you know missed it so I was planning on like I said doing a bunch of side-by-side -side comparisons but after shooting this one side-by-side -side comparison and seeing the results I realized that the Contax T2 is just not going to beat the Canon Rebel with a 40 millimeter pancake when it comes to sharpness and image quality. It's just not going to beat it because these scenes were very easy to photograph. There's no moving subject. It's not gonna confuse the autofocus. It's not about frames per second. It's not about max shutter speed. It's just simple pointing at a subject, focusing on that subject, taking the photo, and the Rebel did a significantly better job when it comes to image quality. Now, I might be a little more incognito with this camera, maybe. Um, it is a tad bit quieter, while this one is just a little bit louder, but it's still, and I could turn off that beep. Um, this one's just a little bit louder, or I mean, a little bit quieter but still, you can still hear it. They're both roughly the same. So after seeing that, I realized that there's no real need in shooting them side by side, but I have shot a lot of rolls since borrowing this from my good friend Gabe from the I Dream of Cameras podcast. Um, I shot it in Yosemite and got some great photos that I really, really like, um, but also missed focus often, um, back focused on occasion, um, uh, oftentimes shooting with a flash, it back focused. And, um, so I was kind of hit and miss with this camera. And I, when I shoot this camera, I get good results all the time. Um, so I know this isn't a completely fair comparison because they're not the same. And I'm not saying that this camera is not worth it. 
I'm more making this video for people that are mainly new to photography or people who aren't and they're still thinking like, oh, maybe I need this camera or maybe I need that camera that's more expensive. Um, it's not all about price, that you could have a camera like this that might not be the coolest most hyped camera, but you can still take amazing photos. So if you have any questions um, about other cameras um, that aren't like say Nikon's, Minolta's, there are a lot of other cameras like this, recommend talking with KEH.com. They are a great resource for finding uh, used cameras that are in great condition and have a warranty. And we'd love to hear what you shoot in the comments below. If you have a budget camera similar to this that performs really well, let us know. We'd love to hear about it and see your results.